live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton. To my left sits Jason Shepard. And just across the way is our good friend, Brian Logan. The man, b -Lo, in Studio B. Is this the first time you've sat in that chair? This is the first time, yeah. yeah. Hey? It's not the first time I've been in here in no, the no, new you, studio. You, you, I've been yeah. in here uh, for the pregame show, postgame shows, but this is nice, man. I need these chairs oh, in my house. Yeah, I, I know, right? <laughs> I'm, look, if you want to <laughs> sneak some... You know, uh, shoot me a text. Yeah, yeah, shoot Brian, me a, shoot I, me a text. I know you're a man that appreciates style and interior design and whatnot, yeah. so it feels appropriate to start with this question. BYU <laughs> unveiled a brand new uniform combination for the Notre Dame game. Okay, the blackout uniforms are coming back, and then mm. the helmets, that ombre effect that starts royal and then kind of fades into yeah. black. They did so in like crazy classic style, teaming up with UFC, and I mean, uh, it, it's unbelievable what they've done. What do you think of the uniform combination BYU has selected for the Notre Dame game? I don't think there's ever been a moment since I've stopped playing where I was jealous of a team or a player. More uh, jealous. Like well, I, I, I was like, I was like, ooh, ooh, and then I was like, dang. I, like, it was, I was excited because of how, you know, how it looked. I mean, like, it's hard to even put in words, um, you know, the, the color combination and then the helmet. Oh, my goodness. Um, and then, and so, like, initially, I'm like, man, them, those are nice. And then I'm like, dang, I wish I could have played. And I'm like, man, I, I, I hate everybody who's about to wear those next week. I hate everybody. I think everybody <laughs> that played from your era and before is kind of feeling like that. Because from the Independence era, like, even Bronco men that all opened up a little bit. The blackout uniforms came into play for the first time in 2011. Right. Yep. But like now that Billy Nixon and Josh Hewitt are involved, like it's it's a way bigger deal it's, at BYU now. It's normal, man. It's it's you know for for fans or for people who don't that don't think it's a big deal. I'll tell you this. So you know the, in 2010, Bronco asked us the seniors, and it was like five of us, right? He asked us, "What do you guys want for your for your gift?" And we said, "We want to go all blue, navy on navy." We could have anything in the world, in the world, anything, anything, and we wanted Navy on Navy. So that shows you, and this was 2010, right? That shows you how big of a deal it is for players, right? Is to is to look good and feel good. Like at the end of the day, like I got you know five girlfriends in the stands. I'm trying to look good for all of them. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I look when, when you when you feel good, it does something to your swag. And then when you when you have that swag, <laughs> when you have that swag. You, you kind of just, you kind of have this this vibe and this energy like, man, you can't touch me or I'm about to go and ball out. I'm about to score this touchdown. I'm about to do, you know, this, this, this you know, create this play or, or whatever the case is. You just kind of have that extra confidence boost. And so I, I personally do believe that there's a correlation. And I mean, shout out to to, to marketing for, for the video. You know, you guys know I'm a marketer. And, I mean, they, like, everything about this, they just did it right. Oh, it was so big time. Doctor. Big time. Getting Matt Franco. The, the, yeah, the, the, it, yeah. Was, it was impressive all the way around. Um, I don't think it's a stretch to say that right now, Notre Dame is somewhat of an enigma. I'm not sure we really know how good they are. They're, they're not ranked. They're not receiving votes. They are coming off of a win over North Carolina. Uh, but they've, they've, had, they've had the bye week, too, so they've had extra time to prepare for BYU, the Cougars come in as as a three point underdog in this game, despite being the ranked team. Yep. How good do you think Notre Dame is? It's, it's tough um, for all the reasons that you said. There's times where I, I I think, and this is probably more the last game. I think, okay, you know what? I think they found their identity. I, I think this is a team who we, you know, as analysts thought they were, right? A team that plays smash mouth football, that are going to line up big on big, and they're going to say, hey, we're going to go right here, you know, on, on two, you know, and, and then they're snapping on two, and then they're running right there, and it's my guys versus your guys. I, I think we saw Notre Dame get back to that uh, during their last game, but, you know, going through some, some uh, you know, troubles with the new quarterback, that's always tough, man. It's always a challenge, right? When you have a new quarterback, think about the offensive coordinator and, and the coaching staff and, and, and the stresses that it has on them being able to say, okay, you know, we have a game plan for this guy and we have, we have packages, but then now we don't, we don't have that anymore. And yet I don't really know what this, what this kid can do yet, right? So 
I think there needed to be a little bit of time for them to kind of find their mojo, find who they are. And again, I think I think you saw some improvements over the last couple of weeks. So I think they're back to who they who they are from a schematic standpoint. I don't think they're they're as good as the their history, right? The history of the last maybe five, ten years. Um, Certainly not. This is a team that's been in the college football playoff right. a couple of times. Right. And recently and, speaking. And I mean if, imagine if Alabama had you know, it started like this. Lost to Marshall at home, and right. we're two and two. People would be like, I think that Nick Saban needs to get fired. I mean, it would be crazy. Literally, people would be running around their heads cut off, asking, you know, Jesus must be coming back. It's crazy, you know. And 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 so I think for us, we have to say, okay, um, they're they, they're finding their identity, but they're not who they 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 were from a maybe talent perspective. And so this is a good opportunity for BYU to to go in. And say, you know what? These last couple of weeks, we didn't progress maybe the way we wanted to. Yeah, we have, we've had some injuries or whatnot, but this opportunity to 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 get a brand name school when when they're down. I mean, and on paper, that I mean, it, look, man. At the end of the day, I don't sit here and say, oh, well, Sam Bradford got knocked out in this in the second half or the first half, right? I say, look, man, I'll be Oklahoma. You know what I mean? And so it's the opportunity for, for this team, for this program, to, to do the same thing. BYU, again, three-point underdog. They're the number 16 team in the country, which is crazy, considering Notre Dame opened the season number five, and we all pointed to the Shamrock series like, oh, this is going to be BYU's toughest game of the season. Right. Now we're wondering if Notre Dame is better than Baylor and Arkansas and kind of where they fit into the scheme. And so, uh, yeah, tough, tough to know, but what I can – tell you, Brian, is BYU's run defense is going to be immediately challenged by Notre Dame on Saturday. The question I have for you is how does BYU change things up schematically so that their run defense can be even a little bit better than what we saw against Oregon and Wyoming and Utah State because the trend is not great right now. So what has to change for BYU's run defense to take on a Notre Dame team that 1 million percent will be attacking BYU's <laughs> defensive front with the run yeah. game I don't I mean if they don't I would think that they would be crazy I don't know you know what would be the reason not to um you know it's 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 hard to answer that because you always assume that coaches will put players in positions that that fit you know their characteristics right so um I know Bronco did this with me um my senior year you know I'm a cover two corner and so he called a lot of plays um, that fit, you know, my skill set. And, and so I was able to make a lot of plays and a, as well as not give up big plays, right? Um, and, and, but, there's, but there's times where you, as, as a coach, you make the right play uh, or you call the right play, you have the right scheme, and guys just aren't executing. Okay, is that what we're talking about here? <laughs> there's, we ta is it more scheme? Is it more players? Is it a combo of both? Like, what, what's the deal? As, as I'm starting to look more into the film and get deeper into it, to me, it, it seems like it's more execution. Um, and and that obviously is going to come with lack of experience. You know, we know that there's been a lot of injuries. And so when you have younger guys out there playing for the first time and playing against quality opponents, I mean, I'm not saying that Utah State or Wyoming is, you know, a top 25 school, but, you know, Wyoming is a quality opponent, right? Um, they're going to battle. They're going to be physical. Um, on paper, you would say, okay, our guys need to, to, to should be able to win these one-on-one -on -one matchups um, in the trenches. However, execution, from, from my standpoint, comes with, uh, comes with, has to do with technique, right? So being in the right position, um, having the right technique to win your one-on-one -on -one matchup. If you're not doing that, the talent kind of, in my opinion, it's, it's irrelevant. Look at me. I'm 5'6", I'm, five, I'm a 5'6 corner, and I won a lot of my one-on-one -on -one matchups. But because my execution uh, in regards to technique, alignment, IQ, right? I, like, I knew what was happening before every play. When we are watching the game, pre-snap, right? What do I say? I go, up, oh, it's going here. And the same thing with Nixon. Me and Nixon, up, oh, it's going here. Up, oh, it's going here. Up, oh, doing that, doing that, doing this. And, and so when you don't have that, and again, my opinion is because it's, it's the experience, right? You have younger guys. It's, it's, it shows up, you know, on, field, on film as if guys are getting blown off the ball, right? It, it shows up as if it's a, it's a talent gap when, or maybe a scheme issue, but I, I, I really believe it's, it's more execution. Okay, so 
two options here for this question. Which one do you think takes priority that has to get on track this week and moving forward? Is it the run defense or is it the run offense? I mean, BYU has Jaron Hall, so I mean, uh, I would say the, the run defense. Um, See, and I'm with you. Like, he can, he's good enough to kind of keep I, the I team think, close. I think that's the right answer. I you need something I would go from to. the rush offense, but the run defense, like. I mean, do we, do we, though? Do we? I mean, okay, so against Baylor, what, 83 yards? 83. And, and I, I would say that Jaron beat Baylor with his arm, right? Um, Game winning touchdown was they, a touchdown. They, they rush have, touchdown they have by needed Lopini him to run. He has not run the ball this year. Right. He, yeah, that's he a good point. has beat teams with his arm. Yep, and I think a little bit of that is, well, a lot of bit of that is by design, right? Making sure that he's healthy. Um, you can even tell when he when he does take off, he's he maybe one two yards and then he's down, right? Which is which is good. We 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 need him for the for the long run. But um, I, I'm more confident in Jaron's arm than I am the defensive line um, being able to stop the run. Um, if guys are healthy, if I mean the the perfect ideal situation would be. Um, the Baylor game, right? When you look at the matchups, you know, Notre Dame and, and what they try to do from an offensive standpoint matches up well with, with BYU's personnel and what they're trying to do defensively. Um, again, I think the biggest thing is, is the health. And so even, even if guys are rotating, if guys aren't 100% healthy, I, I believe scheme versus scheme, the BYU defense has a better chance than the last couple of weeks. All right, Brian Logan with us on BYU Sports Nation. Bila, good to see you, man. Always a pleasure, man. Anytime. <laughs>